tell me what what are some major theoretical constructs of of uh, psychodynamic psychoanalytic Bowen family therapy? What's some of the basic premises? Working of, through the past. Good. Working the past. Good. The unconscious. Yep. So the past is very important. Now, why is the past important? Just for the sake of exploring the past? Unresolved issues in the unconscious. Good. It's about making the unconscious conscious. All right? It's about that movement. So lots of, lots of insight. It's believed in this theory that insight alone will help people change, and that um, the more you can be uh, intentional, conscious, especially in regards to relationships, the healthier your relationships can be. Because uh, according to this theory, we, uh, to both theories, we are, um, we're kind of at the involuntary uh, menace of our unconscious. So if you can become more and more conscious, then it is, the, uh, yeah, that unconscious doesn't control you. You have more choices, especially in regards to how you behave and relate to your relationships. Part of the unconscious is that each of us, growing up in our families, have suffered in some ways some traumatic injuries to our psyche or to our personalities. And, um, and this is very psychodynamic oriented called object relations. And, uh, and it's an attachment theory. A lot of what Freud talked about, psychodynamic, psychoanalytic, Bowen, is attachment theory. I believe in attachments. I know that attachments affect people. I know that what happens to them in their childhood really does play out. You know, my dad was adopted. My dad spent two years in a, um, uh, an orphanage, 19, like from 1940, 1930, I don't know, maybe 39 to 1942 or 41. That affected him, you know? He's got some attachment issues. And how would he not? His family fell apart when he was three. He went to there, spent two years before he got adopted. He's got attachment issues. And you know what? We all have attachment issues. And what got transferred on. And I'll be sharing that with you today. So part of this theory is really geared at helping people understand the way that they attach to their families, but also how I really find this useful is how we attach to significant others, partners, mates, weird, how it's all related. So the psychodynamic theory says that we will unwittingly be attracted to and find partners in our life that complete and address some of the childhood wounds that we have. Ironically, the three things that most attract us to our partners may also get us to divorce our partner. Isn't that interesting? The three things that most attract you during courtship can also be the things that lead you to divorce court. Because those things that attracted you are not about your partner, they're about what you cut off as a child so that you could survive, okay, with psychodynamic. I just want to go over that with you because I use that with my couples. I don't use that with family so much because um, kids really aren't involved in that whole attachment thing except for I help the parents understand how they're passing attachment issues on to their kids. And... Um, and I think you'll, you'll find that those attachment issues for those of us who have been divorced, if we aren't able to work through those, we will most likely repeat 
the same attachment issues in the next marriage or the next marriage. So I really, I really find psychodynamic helps for me and work with couples. But for me, insight alone doesn't work for just simply freeing people. I think there's more to it than that. So I always include some of these other theories that you're going to learn about. So Bowen Family Therapy. One of the first systemically based approaches for working with families, what might be confusing to you about that is that these theories, psychodynamic Bowen, are very intrapsychic because they're about the unconscious. Anytime you're talking about somebody's unconscious, you're talking about an individual. You're talking about the intra part of their, of their being, which is linear, right? How it gets systemic is that within our own intrapsychics, it interacts with our relationships and the relationships that we develop and the people that we choose and the roles that we take and um, yeah, the, the uh, reactions that we have in our relationships. So uh, intrapsychic and interpersonal intersect. They're not always so discreet, you know? So even though I really pound you with this is systems, 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 individuals exist, systems exist, and they are not so separate, right? I mean, they're always interacting. So often referred to as transgenerational family therapy due to historical emphasis. Well, so what that means is that patterns are passed on from generation to generation. We carry unresolved emotional reactivity to our parents and we repeat them in our relational patterns and we unwittingly choose, I mean, if, this, this is what's so scary about, and, uh, about falling in love. If you fall in love, the psychodynamic kind of approach, the object relation approach, really kind of points out that we are trying to resolve our unresolved childhood wounds. Kind of scary, isn't it, that people marry based on that kind of a, uh, yeah. So we hope to help people get out of these repeated relational patterns by making them more conscious. Okay, so we've already talked about the potency of the unconscious and um, basic defense mechanisms and the part they play in family relationships. Give me some basic defense mechanisms that you remember from Freud. Denial. Good. Denial. Classic. Projection. Right? What's projection? This is classic. Happens in marriages all the time. So like when you, what you think you're projecting on the other person is what, what they think, like saying, accusing them of what you're actually Right, yeah, so I might say to my partner, hey, you are so angry, when in fact the, the issue is is that maybe, maybe I'm angry, but I've never been able to express it because when I grew up, anger wasn't okay for women, for girls. Girls had to be happy and they had to be nice. They couldn't be angry, so what do I do in my relationships? I find somebody who's angry or somebody who can be strong or somebody who can be, yeah, do that for me problem is, when they do that, since I don't like it, you know, cut that part off of myself, I eventually don't appreciate it in them, even though I did it begin at the beginning. It's kind of what that is about. So, defense mechanisms are very complex, but I see them play out in marriages. I really do. And in relationships. Emphasis on historical origins of dysfunction, like trauma. I really think that these theories are helpful for people, for populations that have been traumatized like my dad. Sometimes families fall apart like his did. Sometimes children are abused sexually, physically, and that kind of trauma I think does take some work, some resolution, 
that is very appropriate through this. And some of the other theories that we're going to talk about that don't look at anything historical or past, I, I, I definitely am going to teach you about populations that's going to help you with. But uh, if there's trauma, you're, you're not going to want to only rely on those theories that just deal with the present or the future. I think it's really helpful to, to know these. So, helps explain how people form attachments and how family members function as a result. Insecure attachments play themselves out. So, if a child is raised in a home where there's insecure attachment, then they themselves form an insecure attachment when they choose a partner, which then passes on insecure attachments to their children, and so on, and so on. So we need to break those cycles.